today. Uh, let us begin our singing by turning to him, or turning to him. Let us stand together as we sing hymn number 494. And if you want to turn in your hymn, you can do that. 494. today um, and as I know many people I, we're just still coming off fall break are out remember them traveling and then uh, I know a few people told me they were sick this week too so remember them few announcements though so for today a uh, few things we have some special guests uh, in the in the house um, so my brother is speaking today uh, as he does every year once a year uh, Kent will be speaking my sister Lisa will be singing uh, during our offertory so excited about that looking towards this evening. So a bit of a change uh, for our Sunday evening service. So uh, we will begin at five o'clock. And if you have watched anything um, on TV or uh, Facebook over the past few months in a Christian perspective, there is a new movie that was just released in theaters this past week, I believe, uh, titled The Blind. And The Blind has been a pretty popular movie. Uh, it's based off of the Robertson family. Uh, if you remember a few years ago, there was the hit show Duck Dynasty, um, and it tells the true story of them. And we were given uh, theater rights uh, to show that movie tonight. Uh, so we are going to show that at 5 o'clock tonight. Um, so there won't be any youth. We'll have that movie, so they can come watch that. But at 5 o'clock tonight, we'll be showing the blind. And then we'll have choir practice at 7 still uh, immediately following that. So um, right now, Andy has it for us. We're actually going to be able to see. Uh, you don't have it? Got it. Yeah, so if you're watching online, we're going to mute it online. You'll be able to hear it in, in the house today. Um, but when you would play this trailer so we don't shut down our stream online, you'll be able to hear that. But we're going to show the trailer for the movie uh, this evening.
and go out and speak in churches. Um, and uh, as their, their show has also been built on ministry as well. Um, there's uh, an accompanying podcast around this too, so you can listen to that. But that movie will be tonight at 5 o'clock. Uh, we'll be playing that in the back. A um, few other announcements that we have. So if you were here last week and stayed after for the Letcher County lunch, um, we have those invitations in the back for the uh, uh, Martha, Mary, and Me uh, fundraiser coming up. Those are in the back coming up in November. Um, and if you would like to give to that, there's also an address inside the bulletin as well that you can send that to. Operation Christmas Child ends this month. So if you're donating to Operation Christmas Child, uh, this is the final month for that as we have our packing day uh, coming up very soon. And then uh, once again, the PG Hunger 5K will be November 11th at 10 o'clock. Um, and then we need to get those uh, sheets if you're going to, per, to uh, represent in that to Melissa uh, today. Melissa's out, but you can give that to myself um, as well. And then looking at a few other upcoming events, uh, November 4th will be our boxing prep. However, that is also our breakfast. So we'll have breakfast for everyone at 8.30 that morning. Then that'll go right into boxing prep. And then we will do our boxes during our Sunday evening on November 5th. And then as mentioned, we have our PG Hunger 5K the next weekend, uh, November 11th. Any other announcements that I may have missed? Any other announcements? Yes, Becky. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Becky. Uh, for those that couldn't hear that, that was just a reminder of over 7,000 meals that we have to provide from Bible school. And that's just a huge appreciation to everyone that's here and helped out with that. One other announcement I have is everyone that ordered shirts, those are in. Um, that if you ordered the long sleeve crew or hoodie, those are in today. We'll get those to you after service. So please see me after service. We'll get that to you. Any other announcements? Okay. What about praises or prayer requests for the week? Praises or prayer requests? No. Yes, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I told Bobby I called him 32 times and got one phone call back. Uh, so <laughs> the math did not add up uh, with, with Bobby, but no, uh, glad to have you back this morning with us. Yeah, others, praise to prayer request. Coach Anthony yeah. prays for Chris's surgery. He yes. is very well and has made promises once tomorrow. That's great. That's great. Absolutely. Others, praise to prayer request. Yeah, I want to get, go ahead, Kent. Remember him. Remember him. Uh, give an update on Raylan. Many of you were here for the, the prayer service a few weeks ago. Um, based on the, the tests that have come back, Raylan's uh, cancer uh, was back in his leg. Um, they started chemo uh, this week at Children's. I believe they're still in there uh, today as well. We had an opportunity to visit with the family last week. Um, and they're, they'll be coming home, I believe, tomorrow. Uh, so they'll be coming home tomorrow. And then we'll have a few more rounds of chemo uh, throughout this process, but his surgery is planned for November. So continue to remember uh, Raylan, as many of you met a few weeks ago, and that family as they go through this, this difficult time. So just remember them and uh, to keep their spirits high. Any others? Praise or prayer request. Okay, well today uh, we will be in Romans 14. I told Kent uh, several months ago, uh, I said, I want you to come preach for me, but I also want you to preach Romans. So uh, we, uh, we finished up Romans 13 last week. We have three more weeks of Romans. Uh, before we begin, I cannot believe I'm saying it, our Christmas series. So our Christmas series um, is upcoming. As many people know, we have next weekend, uh, the last weekend of October, and then the Christmas songs start hitting on the radio and Christmas trees go up. So I'm excited about that. But let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just come to you now, Lord. We just thank you uh, for this time together. Lord, we just ask that as we continue through the service that you would just guide our hearts, you would guide our minds, Lord, and you would be with us now.
So, Father, just uh, continue to be with us as we sing, as we open up your word, Lord, and as Kent brings a message today. Father, there are many prayer requests that were uh, mentioned, those that may be unspoken. Father, we lift to you as well. Lord, those that are in need, those that are going through diagnosis, um, those that uh, just need you, Father, we lift them to you now. So, Lord, as we, uh, as we come to you, we thank you for all that we have to praise you for, Lord, the ministry you're doing here at Persimmon Grove, the work you continue to do um, all around us, Lord, that we can be a part of. So, Father, just be with us now as we continue throughout the service. We ask your sons and we pray. Amen. Let us all stand together as we sing our fellowship song on Jordan's Stormy Banks. sing the last verse. scripture this morning. I'm going to be reading out of Psalms 37. It's a long one, so I'm going to read the first 14 verses, 13 verses. Do not fret because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong. For like grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It only leads to evil. It leads only to evil. For evil men will be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you will look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy great peace. The wicked will plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, again, we'd like to thank you for this time. This day, Lord, we could be here in your house, learn more about you. God, we just ask that you be with those that were mentioned here this morning, Lord, those that are sick, those that are suffering. Uh, Lord, you know their needs, and, and we just ask that you watch over them, Lord, care for them. Give them peace and only comfort that only comes with, with knowing you. And God, just let that be just a reminder of this temporary place here on earth that we all reside, Lord, and just that there's only one way that we can change that, Lord, and that's having a relationship with you, knowing you, letting you into our hearts. 
And Lord, I just pray that if there's one person here today, Lord, that doesn't know you, that doesn't have that relationship with you, that they hear something today that brings them closer to you. We ask all these things in your son's name. Amen. As Jeremy had mentioned earlier, we have someone here to sing a special for us, Lisa Garrison. So I'm going to ask her at this time if she'll come and sing. And we will also be taking up the offering at this time. Out on the water, the storm raging high, the waters around them were troubled that night, and fear gripped their heart, and they thought they would die, but they failed to remember that the master was nigh, and he spoke the words. And the winds all stood still, and even the waters obeyed his will. And he calmed their storm like he will mine, if I just remember that he lives inside. And why should I worry, and why should I fear? For this very same Jesus, he is always so near. He lives in my heart, and he hears when I cry. Now call on his name till the storm passes by. We read in the Bible how he walked with them. Brought light in the darkness when the way grew dim. How great it would be to have his footsteps in mine and walk with the master all of the time. And when trials come and death seems so nigh, I just call on the master. I know he'll get there on time. And when sickness comes and my body's in pain, all I have to do is call on his name. And why should I worry? And why should I fear? For this very same Jesus, he is always so near. He lives in my heart, and he hears when I cry. And I'll call on his name till the storm passes by. And why should I worry? And why should I fear? For this very same Jesus, he is always so near. He lives in my heart, and he hears when I cry. And I'll call on his name till the storm passes by.
Oh 
Morning. Morning. Well, a couple of things before I get started. I sat in there in that seat. I looked up at the screen. If anybody wants to buy me a Christmas gift, get me some Rogaine, because I, I usually don't see the back of my head, but I can see the back of my head. So, did you, Mama? You better get me, better put it in the stocking, because I need some pretty bad. That baloney, that baloney patch is getting bigger all the time back there. Thank you, Jeremy, for zooming in on that, too. I know that you had me right there. But anyway, it's great to be with you. Another thing, I don't know if you caught it, but his big brother certainly did. When Jeremy was making his opening remarks, he said, when he got to the part about Lisa singing, I'm real excited about that, he said, but when he talked about me preaching, I didn't hear anything like that at all. <laughs> didn't hear him say anything about being excited. <laughs> I mean, just not much enthusiasm in his voice or anything, but when he got to her, boy, I'm sure excited about Lisa singing today. But anyway, I'm just kidding. We'll get to the word here in just a minute. I'm going to ask my good buddy and friend, Brother Roger, to pray for the message. I'm going to read a portion of this Romans 14, probably not all of it, maybe through the first 13 verses. But before I do, uh, it's a middle-aged woman. One time she had a heart attack and she was taken to the hospital and while she was on the operating table, she was, you know, having a near-death experience. And during the experience, she cries out and asks God, says to him, is this it? God says, no. He says and explains to her, you're going to have 30 more years to live. So upon her recovery, she decided to stay in the hospital. She had a facelift and she had liposuction. She had a tummy tuck and so on, even brought in uh, someone to come and change the color of her hair. She figured since she had uh, another 30 years, she might as well make the most of it. So she, when she walks out of the hospital after the last operation, she's killed by an ambulance speeding by. And she arrives uh, in front of God and she starts complaining and says to God, I thought uh, you said I had another 30 years. God said, well, I didn't recognize you. <laughs> this morning's uh, message is, has somewhat to do to begin with with what we can do sometimes is be hard on people and complain. And she did that, the woman did before God. And as we go along, kind of we'll speak to, try to, the best we can with God's help about what God expects us to be, what he expects us to look like. You know, the Christian should be recognizable to the world as a one that loves the Lord and a changed life, a, a new start, a new beginning, and all of that. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to be reading out of the New King James Version, Romans 14. And again, I'm going to ask uh, my friend Roger, I'm going to read through. We'll, we'll try to speak to all the chapter the best we can. But I believe I'll read through verse 13 and then he can pray for what the Lord's given me. The Bible says, Receive one who is weak in the faith, but not to disputes over doubtful things. For one believes he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. Let not him who eats despise him who does not eat. And let not him who does not eat judge him who eats, for God has received him. Who are you to judge another servant? To his own master he stands or he falls. Indeed, he will be made to stand, for God is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day above another, or another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day observes it to the Lord, and he who does not observe the day to the Lord, he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives God thanks. And for he who does not eat to the Lord, he does not eat and gives God thanks. For none of us lives to himself, and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and 
rose and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. Therefore, let us not judge one another any more, but rather resolve this, not to put a stumbling block or cause to fall in our brother's way. Brother. Amen. Thank you, my brother. <clears throat> In this particular chapter of Romans, this letter to the Romans, uh, the great apostle, he continues to call believers and Christians and lovers of Jesus to unity and love. Specifically, those perceived to be stronger in faith and those in the faith perceived as weaker. Unity, it's a wonderful thing. The Bible says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Unfortunately, we see in life many times that it's hard for people to be unified. It's often difficult within the church and the church world. And in the early church, Christians and those maybe that were just beginning and trying to figure some things out as believers. Uh, they had a tough time with each other. And disputes would, uh, would come about and there would be disagreements and problems would arise. And that's no different than today. Because for as long as time there's been differences among folks. And that's going to be the case until the Lord comes back and establishes his uh, great kingdom. That'll be true until we all get to heaven. And if people like myself and the people of this world, if we do things to divide and we don't do things to bring people together in love in all the fruits of the Spirit that uh, we can have with Jesus, if we ask for them and, and seek Him, uh, it'll be hard to make it. I mean, He makes the decision, none of us do, but we can't live divisive lives and and give people a hard time at every turn about their thoughts and their beliefs and what they think on this and think on that. Some things are fundamental, and I'll speak to that in a moment, but some things, they're, it's not all cut and dry in the Bible. But I hope that we can get the message today and all the days of our life that there is a rejoicing day. There'll be a day that there'll be no division. There'll be just all unity. And what a day that'll be. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. And when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. And when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. I wish more often that we could do that today. That we could all just rejoice and get along and sing and shout the victory. More than getting all caught up in petty bickerings and things that are not pleasing to the Lord. Now, I don't get that feel around here. I never have. I believe that I'm preaching to a body of believers that love the Lord and love one another. And I see you're all coming together and in unity and doing great things and outreach and just a very active and uh, becoming church. 
I can see the fruit of this church. I can see the growth of this church. And I don't feel a spirit of dissension or division ever when I come here. I always feel welcome. My family feels welcome. You make us feel that way. And that's the way it's supposed to be. So I, you know, I've been asked to preach this message, and, and I'm sure it's for someone. It's maybe for all of us. I'm sure that it is. God's word never is, goes away void. But I believe I'm preaching to people that know how to get along and how to stay together with God's leading and guidance and stay unified. But this idea of uh, harm, bickering, and disputes among believers is obviously on Paul's mind, hard at the beginning of this chapter. Complaining evidently has kind of moved into town again. So he begins to address the issue. He does so in the first 12 verses, talking about rules about food and the days, uh, important days and, and days of worship and things of that nature. And what he's basically, what I get from it is that he's urging the early Christians, the early church to just let some things be. He's more concerned about the way that we deal with our differences amongst us than about the fact that we have differences. Boy, how wonderful would that be today if we could learn that today because we make such a dispute, such a division, such hard-heartedness and just spew just hateful things about our differences. You see that in the world. Some people cannot respect the fact that we look different, that our skin color is different, that we come from different places and different backgrounds. Some people like to make that a big deal. Politics, the same thing. Religion, the same thing. The things that we do, the same thing. There are things about the Christian that we are all alike. But yes, there are differences amongst us. But let me share this morning, Jesus Christ does not require us to agree on every single little matter, but he does require us to love one another, to care about one another, to look out for one another. That's the main objective. Verse 1, to receive one who is weak in the faith. In other words, in receive one, accept one for where they are. We're all at different levels in our journey, different, different places. My good friend Roger, he's pretty far down the path of maturity and spiritual maturity to the point that he knows the word, he teaches the word, he lives the word, and so many of you are just in the same category. But some may just be getting started. It's a little bit different. Some may hear the sound of my voice, may still be on the milk, not quite ready for the meat. We need to be patient, long-suffering, loving to those people. Paul's talking about the person here whose faith in Christ requires additions. He's talking about these dietary restrictions, rules. The one weak here is the one who didn't eat meat. Paul is saying here, exhort them that ate and don't judge them. And those who ate of anything they chose to, the stronger, exhort them. Don't have contempt for those who eat what they choose to eat. Paul is saying here, in so many words, don't make a big deal about these things that you perceive people to be weak or weaker. But acknowledge them as brothers and sisters in Christ. To include them in what's going on to include them in the body, to make them a part of your circle of friends. The Bible says a man who has friends must show himself to be friendly. We can help others be strong, but that happens through love. That happens through unity. That doesn't happen through division. Logic that involves arguing all the time, having to debate every point to the point, I must win, I must convince you, I must be right, you're never right, I always am, that won't win anybody to Jesus. That type of attitude just will not win. 
superiority or thinking that you've arrived and, and your brother or sister's just not quite there with you. They're just not quite in step with you. They're just not on the same holy ground that you walk upon. That's a problem. That won't win people to Christ. Humility and grace is what does that. Oftentimes when you have conversations of such nature and disputes come to be, it's because of an agenda people have. People with an agenda seem to welcome people as a means to an end. Well, what are you talking about? Well, it's like that old boy might try to sell you a car, and he just comes out there and pats you on the back and wants to give you an ink pen or give you a notebook and wants to do this, that, the coffee pot's over here, we got donuts over here, and he's just as friendly as he can be. But if he sees maybe you're not going to buy that vehicle he wants you to buy, then it's a little bit different. He changes. That's what I'm talking about, an agenda. Quarreling doesn't bring about any kind of unity. It doesn't express love. It won't draw people closer to the Lord. It'll bring about division. One man eats everything in faith while another eats only vegetables. See, you understand in the days of Paul and the Jewish people that what you eat and what you partake of was a big thing. Some things were considered maybe stuff you shouldn't eat, like pork, for example. One group here, it seems to me, realizes that salvation depends on Christ alone, not on observing certain dietary laws. See, they realize that they're free from these restrictions. Jesus understood this too because he said one day when he called the multitude to himself, he said to them, hear and understand. It's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles the man. So Paul is saying, let's not lose our mind over things like this. Let's not get carried away. Accept your brother, accept your sister. And then he begins to talk about these important days. I guess you could pertain it to the, the day that we select for worship. Some think of Saturday. Some think we do of Sunday. Most people do think of Sunday. To set aside a special day, that was important to Jewish Christians in Rome at the time. The importance of the Sabbath, the importance of special holy day, observance. I don't think I said that quite right, but it was important to them. Just like the dietary codes. See, it was part of their identity. Paul says, let each be fully convinced in his own mind. Whether it's Saturday for worship and a special day or it's Sunday, let each be fully convinced in his own mind. But I want to throw a sidebar in here. Be convinced of this too today. Whether your special day is Saturday, your special day is Sunday, whatever your special day is, don't ever forget to be neighborly with that one that needs your help. That one where the ox is in the ditch. Don't go on past him even on the Sabbath day. I don't care if it's this morning. I don't care if it's Saturday at Mass. I don't care where it is that if you're going to church and you see someone along the side of the road and they're in desperate need, and you just say, well, I've got to get to that special place, that holy place. If I have to get there, I just can't take time to stop and help. I've got to get to the church. We're missing it. We're missing it because we should stop and help our brother and sister. That's worship. That's more what the Lord would do. I can read over there, I believe it's over in Luke 10, where the Levite and the priest... The godly, the elite, the big boys in the face, so to speak. That one was laying in the ditch, but they just went right on by. But it was that good old Samaritan that took time. Who loved their brother more? He did. He did. 
didn't matter what day it was. He was going to help him, and that's the way we should feel. I'll go on. Verse 6 says, He who observes the day observes it to the Lord, and he who does not observe the day to the Lord, he does not observe it. Paul says, In the eating and all things, thanks should be given to the Lord. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. And that's true. He gives us life here. It's, it's only by the Lord's goodness and grace, Roger, and everything else that I'm standing here trying to preach for him this morning to you. It's all about him. It all goes back to him. He gives us life here. He'll give us eternal life and victory in heaven one day. We answer to God. We don't answer to man. Now, we should live a good life in front of man. We should do our best to love our brother and not take him for granted, but we answer to God. That's the whole heart of the middle of the Bible. You can read from Genesis 1 to Psalms 8, 118 and 8 till 118 and 8 all the way to Revelation, the last verse in the book. In the very middle verse... Psalm 118 and 8 says it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Yeah, we're dependent upon each other and man for a time. Verse 7, for none of us lives to himself. We depend upon our parents. We depend upon the farmers that give us food to eat. We depend upon the doctors who take care of our medical needs. But in the end, all those folks, our parents, our teachers, our doctors, the farmers, they all come from God. God gives them the breath that they breathe. He gives them the abilities. He gives them the mind. It all goes back to him. So we first and foremost need to know that we need to be dependent upon him because it's all about him. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. We need to accept others and not judge them. Verse 10, but why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? Jesus said in the greatest sermon that was ever written, that was ever preached, judge not, lest ye be judged. Well, you might say, well, Ken, I don't do that. I don't have all these issues with what people eat or what they choose not to and all the rest of it. But you can see it. And a lot of times in evangelical circles, and man has to work it out for himself, and I'll get to that in just a moment, but we say that we don't, but maybe we do. Some may think it's wrong to watch a certain movie. Another might think that it's okay. We may want to struggle about and judge that one that watches it, or if we're not careful, we'll be very critical and self-righteous of the one who chooses not to, well, they think they're holier than thou and, and too good and too this and that the other to even watch. We might question about the type of music that people choose to listen to. Some listen, some don't. We, in our, if we're not careful, self-righteousness might wag our tongue for someone to listen to a country music station or a, a 70s music station, I hope not, because I listen to my serious 70s all the time. I'll confess it to you. I like the Eagles. I like that peaceful, easy feeling. You might not think I should listen to it, but I like a peaceful, easy feeling. I'm here to testify to you. I'll listen to you. Well, some people might think, well, Pastor, why would you do that? And some people have no problem with it. Why do you dance? Shouldn't do that. Some people's all right with it. Some people aren't. Well, they dance in the Bible. Look it up. Now, I know there's a way to do it in dignity and grace, and we won't go down that road. Some, well, you shouldn't buy your groceries in a place that sells alcohol. Why in the world would you wear that down on the beach? Even some people, what Bible you read up? I had a man when I was young and just stumbling about, and I'm still maybe you thinking, well, you're stumbling about today, Kent, son. But back when I was young and trying to speak for the Lord, son, I stood in the church and I preached out of a, I think it was the NIV version, and a, between him and God, but a so-called man of God who should have known better, 
that should have been a little bit more off the milk than he was, but he was still on the bottle a whole lot more than I was reading out that NIV Bible. He got out and walked out of the church. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. You don't uh, have disputes over that. Yes, the translations is important. I read out of the New King James Version this morning. Usually I read out of the King James Version. But let me tell you what, whatever version you read out of, it's important that it sticks in here. That's the thing right there. And that's what that old boy needed to learn today. But he didn't. He walked out. I don't know. Maybe he's got it all straightened out. I hope that he does. But I call these personal convictions. And personal convictions, they differ with people. What you may, may feel is wrong to do, your brother may not, your sister may not, and vice versa. God doesn't think that everything's wrong in life to do. I'm sure glad of it. But if it's wrong for you, if something in your conscience, if something in your spirit says in your life you shouldn't do a thing, that's God in my way of thinking, speaking to you, don't do it. If you're convicted of it. If you feel wrong in doing something, in my opinion, that's God saying you need, to, you need to stop that. But if he doesn't convict you of it, live in liberty. Live in faith. Live in freedom with your choice. But none of us need to shake a finger at one who believes because certain things are between you and God. Now, some things are just wrong. I said I'd get to this. We know we're not supposed to bear false witness to one another. We know we're not supposed to, to lie. We know we're not supposed to commit adultery. There's things that's just cut and dry, and we know, thus saith the Lord, and it's not supposed to happen. But some things are not that cut and dry. Personal convictions. What might be okay for you may not be with the next fella, and vice versa. Don't make a big deal about that. Pray for, the, pray for each other. That would be the thing. And let God take care of it. For in the end, it's all up to him. Verse 11, For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, for it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us, verse 12, shall give an account of himself to God, therefore let us not judge one another any more. And then he begins to talk about, and there's quite a bit here, and I'll try to get through it as quick as I can because I don't want to keep you here all day. I'm sure you got things to do, but there's a lot here. He talks about stumbling block. Not to put a stumbling block or cause anything to get in the way that would make your brother fall. See, I would think a great stumbling block would be if you're constantly finding fault with your brother, constantly wanting to dispute with him about things that we're talking about. I think if you do that on and on and on, that becomes a stumbling block for maybe the one you perceive as the weaker one in the faith. You having to be right all the time. Them, you having to prove something to them all the time. We can be a stumbling block in a lot of ways. I define the term as anything that makes someone stumble, giving them ideas of advice to things that make them act against God's will. In other words, anything that encourages people to do something that's forbidden in God's word. In other words, sin. To lie, to cheat, to do things that lead to ungodliness. Those are stumbling blocks. If you encourage your buddy to cheat on a business deal or cheat on his income taxes that can cause one to stumble that could be an encouragement we'll just keep doing that to people that, that's what you should do if you encourage your buddy well it's alright if you step out on your gal go ahead and do that it'll be a big time you'll have a good time she'll never find out go ahead and do that that's a stumbling block why would we do that but I believe it happens if you choose to drink a glass of wine in front of uh, your friend and you know that your friend struggles in that area or your brother does or your sister does, why would you do it? It's a stumbling block. Anything that can lead one to 
sin or great excess in something that's troubling to them is something we shouldn't do. Satan, he's good at stumbling blocks. He had all sorts of that going on when he was in the wilderness with Jesus. All those temptations. But Jesus held true to who he was, and he's the word of God, and he used the word of God, and he fought him off. But Paul cites his own example of causing one to stumble, and that's what verses 14 through 18 are about. He begins to talk again about the partaking of food, and he says there is nothing unclean of itself. But to him that considers it unclean, to him it is unclean. So if you ate certain types of food in front of your brother who struggles in belief of what you are eating, verse 15 says you're no longer walking in love. So I keep harping on it. Consider the other man's thoughts, the other man's maturity, the other man's walk, the other man's experience, where he's been in life compared to you, how long he's been on the way compared to you. And don't put a stumbling block in front of him. Show him a little bit of acceptance, a whole lot of love, and a whole lot of grace and mercy. And let God take care of the personal convictions. Don't you try to ram it down his throat. Let God do it in his way. In other words, don't let your good be evil spoken of. Things like your diet and these dietary practices and esteeming one day more important than the next. Paul goes on to say, and I'm about to get home, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. See, getting back to the diet, that's what we need a heavy dose to ingest today, is the bread of life. The bread of Jesus. What we need to drink of is the water that he offered that Samaritan woman that day at Jacob's well. His water, his spirit, his love, and all the rest. Verse 18, for he who serves Christ in these things is accepted to God and approved by men. Pursue the things that create and make for peace. For Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons. And let me add the daughters of God. Pursue the things that edify others. Paul is talking to the Romans, but he also talked to those of the Thessalonian church and said, therefore comfort each other and edify one another just as you are doing. The church should be marked by how much we love each other rather than than how we judge each other. So I want to end it this way, verse 22. I want to ask, as Paul did this morning to you folks, do you have faith? Have it yourself before God. If you choose to do a thing, do so without condemning yourself. If you condemn yourself out of lack of faith in what you're doing, stop doing it. Do you have faith this morning in your choices? in your convictions. This message is about unity. It's not about division, doing things to remain unified. I've been doing this a lot here lately in my preaching. I want everybody to stand, if you would. Stand with me. I want to ask these questions. I want you to respond in unity. You can raise your hand or you can say the great name. But I want us to respond in acceptance and unity by reciting to what these statements are, these questions are, the greatest name of all names, the name that every knee shall bow to and every tongue shall confess the name of Jesus. So here we go. Who is the author of our salvation? Jesus. Let me me hear you. Who is the creator of all things good? Jesus. Better. Who is the bread of life? Jesus. Who is the light of the world? Jesus. Who is the great shepherd who protects us? Jesus. 
Who is the great vine who blesses us? Jesus. Who is the door to heaven? Jesus. Who is the way? Jesus. Who is the truth? Jesus. Who is the life? Jesus. Who is the resurrection and the eternal life of those who believe? Jesus. Who's your wonderful counselor? Jesus. Our almighty God? Jesus. Our everlasting Father? Jesus. Our Prince of Peace? Jesus. Our King of Kings? Our Lord of Lords, Jesus. our amazing grace, Jesus. our best friend, Jesus. our ram in the thicket, Jesus. our redeemer. Jesus. His name is Jesus, the only name under heaven and earth that saves. His arms are the everlasting arms that stretch from east to west on his cross to bring victory. I like Paul. And you've already been over this part, over in Romans 8. But I, like him, I am persuaded today that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. That's unity. That's unity that you can take to the bank. Nothing can separate us. Nothing should separate us. Division is of the devil. Unity is of God. Unity is the cause of Jesus. Unity is the purpose of Jesus. Unity is the love of Jesus. Let us be united today. Let us never engage in petty disagreements that divide us. Edify the brethren. Carry each other's burdens. In other words, love like Jesus loved. Love God, love people. Shouldn't be any debate. Shouldn't be any quarreling over that, weak or strong. Because that's the essence of the two great commandments. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And love thy neighbor as yourself. Jeremy, if you come and however you see fit, in the order, or give the invitation however you want to do it. It's been good to be with you. Let's pray. Father, we come to you now, Lord. We just thank you for this time together. We thank you for the message here in Romans 14. Oftentimes we think about what is the, the way of living, what is your call to us as being a living sacrifice as we've talked about so often in Romans. And Lord, many times it's to, to show you into the world. But Lord, there are times that we cause others uh, in their living to stumble. So Father, as we examine our lives today, Lord, just be with us now as we think about how we can be a better witness, as how we can be a better testimony. And as Ken has laid out there, there are many ways that we have to self-examine and understand that uh, we can't put ourselves above others, but Lord, we have to serve others. So Father, uh, we just ask now that if there's someone here today that struggles with that, Lord, that they would uh, bring it to you. And Father, most importantly, that if there's someone here today that doesn't know you, that today could be that day. So Father, we invite those now. We ask your sons and we pray. Amen. Let us sing our invitation hymn at this time. To everyone attending, thank you, Kent, Andy. We can adjust the camera now. We can take that compression setting off uh, for those that were uh, that were watching up there for Kent. Um, Kent and I most often agree on uh, everything, minus uh, peaceful, easy feeling, and I don't know that that is necessarily my my taste of music. Uh, but I appreciate him always uh, coming and uh, and preaching. 
uh, pray for his home church today. Uh, Kent uh, is also a pastor down in uh, Maysville, so always it's hard to, to step away, so pray for them. Next week, uh, I'll be back with you finishing out Romans. Two more weeks of Romans as uh, Paul closes out before we get into the Christmas season. So excited to, to bring us all through the 24 weeks that we've had in Romans over the past two years. So be back with us then. Also be back with us tonight. Uh, so tonight, the blind, 5 o'clock, come be a part of that. We'll have that in the back. Um, and then we'll have choir practice at 7. So I know the choir is gearing up for obviously every week, but also our Christmas cantata, uh, which is coming up soon. Um, and then also the shirts. Uh, if you have those, uh, please bear with me. I'll get those after service, and we'll get those passed out to you. So if you've ordered those, uh, stay after, and we'll get those to you. Any other announcements that we may have missed? Okay. I think Jeremy is leading Children's Church. Then you will come up and close us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, Lord, we just thank you, Father, for Kent's message today, Lord. Uh, Father, we just uh, we give you, uh, Lord, all the glory and praise, Father. Uh, what, a, what a great life, Father, you give us, Father, if we just only open our hearts and accept it, dear Lord. And Father, we know times are tough. The world looks so bleak. But, Lord, if we just look to you, Father, with that childlike faith, just, just, just be with you, Lord, and just, just thank you for what's to come, Father. We can make it. We can make it. So, Father... Uh, if there be a lost soul here today, Father, we pray that they not leave this little building, Lord. And, and Lord, just, be, uh, just know that, uh, that they'll be in that kingdom forever. So, Lord, we just praise you and thank you. Just lift up the sick once more, Father, and uh, we just pray for healing and miracles. And we thank you for what you give us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Mm -hmm.